Good morning, everybody. I am in South Georgia currently, headed out for the weekend. I uh, spent most of the day driving, but we finally got down here, and I'm going to be checking out this abandoned barn spot to start out the day. And then we're going to be spending the rest of the week here in coastal Georgia. So I'm going to flip this stuff, put the GoPro on, and we'll see what we can turn up. Oh, Copperhead. Check this out. I can barely see him in there. Well, there's the first snake of the day. We got a nice copperhead. Tucked back under this piece of tin. I don't know if we're gonna be able to get him in a better spot for photos, but it's nice to be on the board at our first stop. Pretty good looking snake. Might be the first one of those we flipped this year too. Very cool. All right, everyone. Well, that tin spot looked really good, but didn't produce anything but the one copperhead. But nice to be on the board already at our first stop. We are now at our second stop, which has been recently burned. And there's a place I've never really spent much time looking for snakes. So I'm excited to get out and into this for a little bit today and see what we can find. Well, the stump hole had a big shed coming out of it. This is probably a big rat snake. Based on what I can see here, the head's kind of messed up, but it is keeled scale, whatever it is, or at least lightly keeled. And uh, whenever you see the belly pattern like that, it's generally a pretty good sign you're looking at a rat snake. All right, everyone. Well, we kind of transitioned from that nice burned habitat into this nasty field. I walked over to this stump hoping that there would be something out basking. And uh, as I was poking around, I heard something moving at my feet or behind me and tucked down in the grass was that. <laughs> The biggest thing I wanted to see out here today. This is a new county for me. A new part of the state, really. I've never even... Actually, this might not be a new county for me. I've seen them fairly close to here, now that I think about it. But it's been a very long time either way. And that would be a fantastic snake with a fresh shed. Unfortunately, it's just starting to go into what's probably its first shed of the season. So, not looking its best, but still. A king snake is a king snake. Well, with that guy, the trip is off to a pretty fantastic start between him and the copperhead. And like I said, it took us until probably 2 o'clock this afternoon to start herping. And we still got a king snake and a copperhead. So pretty solid first day of the trip so far, if you ask me. And we've still got a couple hours of daylight ahead of us. So I'm going to put this beauty back at his stump. And we're going to see if we can find another one. All right, I'm assuming this guy came out of that hole right there. He was coiled up like right here when he started to crawl off. So we'll just uh, put him down and let him go. See where he ends up. Looks like he is going to go down that hole. It's kind of a weird thing to see in a recently burned area. There's just a marbled salamander chilling. Doesn't seem to be bothered whatsoever. He's a little bit dry, but other than that, he's fine. All right, I've shifted gears into salamander mode. Walking through this picturesque little swamp. This is where I found my lifer mud salamander back in, well, a long time ago. And uh, I haven't seen one here since, so we're going to poke around a little bit today to end the day and see if we can find one. All right, I'm getting eaten alive by mosquitoes, but this is a, I do believe this is a new species for the year. This is the coastal plain dwarf salamander. We have seen a couple, but I haven't shown them just because of crazy circumstances going on at the time. These were once considered the same species as the Chamberlain's and Hillis's dwarf salamanders, but recent genetic work revealed them to actually be different. And just taking a quick look at them, it makes sense because these guys are a lot duller on top and on the bottom. They tend to just be brown, but they can have some pretty brilliant blue speckling going on, which this guy doesn't have too much of, but you can see what I mean there on the side of the face and the side of the body. But as their name implies, very small salamanders. This is a full-grown adult at only about an inch and a half, two inches long. All right, everybody. Well, it is the next day, and uh, the forecast is not too promising for herping, so I think we're going to spend today mostly just chilling and exploring in the city, and then tomorrow we'll get back to herping. It's loud out here. Yeah. Sheesh. Good morning, everybody, from the dense 
and cold coastal forests of Georgia. We're gonna be walking these edges out here today. It's really cool right now. It's supposed to warm up nicely though. And hopefully there will be some snakes out basking. Yesterday was a nice rainy day, so it's nice and wet out here. It feels pretty snaky, at least when the wind's not blowing, so we'll see. Well, Caitlin spotted our first snake of the day. There's a black racer like 15 feet up in this bush. You barely see him, I'm pretty sure it's a racer, but that's the best look we're gonna get at that guy. There's an Eastern glass lizard right here on the crawl. I have not seen that too often. That is awesome. Big one too. I thought it was a snake, but no. That's exactly what I was kind of hoping we'd see today. Well, that is one of the coolest things about the Georgia coast, in my opinion. Just being able to find these guys pretty much everywhere. Where we live, they're pretty rare. So hopefully we'll get to see a couple of these today. So I'm just going to put him back in the grass and we're going to keep moving. This is a kind of good example that we don't get to see too often because these guys don't calm down like this every time we find one. But you can see, that's his vent. And everything above that is his body. And everything below is his tail. They call these guys glass lizards because they are very, very fragile and will break in half very easily, quite literally in half. That's the point right there at which he could drop his tail. So we're going to gently put him back into the grass. I'll let him swim away. A little bit of board action. Very disintegrated, but... Oh, glass lizard! Nice! Number two. That was a cool flip clip. You can kind of see what I mean when I say the other one looks like it was in shed, because this one's a lot prettier. It just doesn't have that weird kind of glossy look to the belly that the other one did, but... Pretty big glass lizard. It's calmed down a little bit. Let's see just how long this one is. I talk about this almost every time I find a glass lizard, but I kind of have to because otherwise I'll get a million comments asking me how I know this is a lizard, not a snake. You can see there's a very well defined ear hole right there. They can also blink, which I mean, this one would if I was to try to poke its eyeball, but I'm not going to do that. And they've also got this lateral fold that runs down the side of the body. You can see there. Very, very cool animals. One of my absolute favorites. There's a baby, look at that. Look at that. We got a baby Eastern glass lizard. Very thick looking in shed baby. And then we got a big lady. Both under these little boards right here. Very productive little stop. Good stuff, we'll let them go. Eastern glass lizard. Yep. He's so cute, y'all. Yeah. We might try to come out here and put a less rotten board in the future, but let her go. Might take her a second to work her way under there. There she goes. There you go. All right guys, so I just flipped this uh, big railroad tie and up inside it is our next find of the day. I think this is a rat snake, but we're gonna pull him out and see. Look at that. That is a yellowish rat snake. I think this would be a pretty good candidate to call a Georgia greenish rat, which is, ugh, he's stinky. Look at, yeah, gross, man. Why'd you do me like that? That is definitely very different looking than any of the rat snakes we normally see. And I've never seen a rat snake from this part of Georgia either, so it's cool to see one. It's definitely not disappointing. Very interesting and unique. Look at that striping on the side. That's the yellow rat coming through. Very good looking snake. You can see this snake is living right on the edge of the coastal marsh there. What a beautiful animal. So, so different than any rat snakes we normally see here in Georgia. Really cool. All right, we'll let this guy crawl back into his railroad tie. Actually, probably a big female, but really great looking snake. Let's see. All right, there you go. Zoom. 
All right, everybody. Well, it's starting to get a little toasty and we have somewhere to be shortly. So we're just walking around the little nursery here, seeing what all they have, but it was a pretty productive day. And it's been a pretty productive trip all around so far. I just love this part of the state. We don't get down here nearly enough, so I enjoyed it. And we've got all day tomorrow and Monday to herp too. So hopefully I'll get at least one more episode out of this. But for now, I'm going to wrap it up. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.